everybody! I made it back. I think it's three weeks rather than two weeks, but I made it. So hello and welcome to the Pins and Needles podcast. My name is Zoe. You can find me everywhere on Instagram and Ravelry as Pins and Needles UK. Um, I do have a Ravelry group for this podcast. It's linked down below along with my email address, timestamps and show notes. Um, I do post a thread in my podcast group for every episode of this podcast. So if you want lengthy chats, that's the best place to do it. Again, I'm in my dining room today. I am um, mostly because I wanted to share one of my birthday bunches of flowers with you. Um, it's my birthday today. It's Monday the 9th of March and I am 41 years old. Um, we kind of did family celebrations yesterday because it was a Sunday and the kids were home and Dave was as well and everyone's gone to home, uh, gone to school and work and I'm on my own in the house today which is rather nice. So I got all my jobs done this morning, well as many jobs as I'm going to do for the moment and I thought I'd take the opportunity to record and then that can be um, gently uploading this afternoon and I think, what's the time? half past one, I've got two hours till the kids are home. So if I can whip through this, I can have a couple of hours on my bun, on my armchair, um, catching up on some other people's podcasts and doing some cheeky knitting. Um, quick bit of admin. I wanted to let you know that the um, waiting list for the Cardiff Knit Tea Retreat is open. If you missed out on getting a place or you didn't find out about it until too late, please do still head over to the website. You can click on the Cardiff 2020 tab um, and there's a link there to fill in the waiting list form. So do think about doing that because you never know. And we do still have a few places left for the June Knit Tea Retreat this coming summer. Links to all of the Knit Tea Retreat stuff, to the forms and all the dates, again, are down below. So do go and click on those. We've had... Um, a little bit of activity in the retreat Ravelry group, which is nice. A few people have posted, um, we have a thread in there for people that knit things with yarn they got from the retreat, either the bring and take table or from the marketplace. And a couple of people have posted things in there, which is really fun to see. And um, I don't know if I'll have time today, but I have a top I want to cast on with some yarn by Caroline, who is Colourful Creativity. And I want to try and knit a summer top. So I'm, I don't know if I'll get round to it today. We'll have to wait and see. Okay, I'm just going to plunge on in and I'm going to start with finished objects because I finished my boxy. I've been knitting this. I realised I never set up a project page for it, so I don't actually know when I cast it on. But I've been knitting it for a while and I've loved every minute. And it's the sort of project where you're actually a bit sad when it's finished. Is, is it just me? I don't, I don't know. Um, I've just enjoyed it so much and I've got some yarn that I could make a second one out of. So maybe there'll be another boxy in my future. Anyway, the pattern is the Fingering Weight Boxy by Hohi Logatelli and it was gifted to me by Mars of Hay Brownberry. And the yarn is Owl About Yarn Tweed Owl in the colourway purple. Um, again, I mentioned this before, I'm not sure if Jenny will be restocking this, but it is absolutely gorgeous yarn. So I will stand up, well I will half stand up, and then you might be able to see. So there we go, it's exactly what it says in the tin. It is boxy. So it's got garter short row shaping at the top. Um, it's a drop sleeve. And I've done three quarter length sleeves, um, a slightly rounded neck. <laughs> There's my side view, might not be my best angle. But there we go. I absolutely love it. I can see me wearing this loads. Um, I'm definitely a garment knitter, I like it very much. And I wanted a few plainer things in my wardrobe so that I can wear nice scarves over the top and shawls that I've knitted without hiding the gloriousness of the jumper. So just a really lovely blank canvas like this is gonna be really good for that. I did make some modifications and I have listed them in my Ravelry project page. My tension was a little different. Um, so I knit the fourth size. Yes, I did, I knit the fourth size, but 
the finished circumference of my jumper is 60 inches rather than 68 inches, um, which is fine. I knew that in advance going in. I did do a tension square and I was happier. I didn't want a absolutely huge um, finished jumper. So yeah, about 20 inches of positive ease was sufficient. I had to modify the sleeves a little bit. Um, again, I think because I'm just a tall person, I'm six foot one, the sleeve, well, the, the body where you picked up to, to knit the sleeves should be actually in your elbow crease. So mine is kind of halfway down my bicep. So I, my arms are that much longer than normal. So I had to sort of do my own thing with the sleeves a bit. So I picked up an odd, a strange number of stitches and I did um, longer sleeves with more increases in them. Again, they're all listed in my project page if you're interested. But overall, I'm really thrilled with it. The yarn is gorgeous and um, I can see me wearing it absolutely loads. I'm, I'm really thrilled with it. And it's also nice to have a second top out of Jenny's yarn so that when we go to yarn shows around the UK, we could have one or two on display. My pavement sweater is knit out of her yarn as well. So yeah, always nice to have finished garments to display. And that's it for finished objects, I'm afraid. I haven't, um, I've mostly just been concentrating on this. In terms of works in progress, I've been chugging away on Jocelyn's socks. I didn't actually bring them to show you. Bear with me one second and I'll be back. Turns out it was two things I forgot to bring to show you for works in progress. Okay, Jocelyn's first sock is finished. I didn't think ahead to bring a spare set of blockers. But here it is and I got her to try it on over the weekend and it does actually fit. It's also why it looks a little bit odd because she wore the one sock for the rest of the evening. <laughs> so there we have it. Um, I mentioned the yarn last time. It's Opal from the Claude Monet series. Curl away 9682. Opal Claude Monet. I've made reasonable progress on the other one, actually. I don't suffer with second sock syndrome at all. Um, and usually as soon as I finish the first one, the second one goes straight onto the needles. And that's how far I've got. So I've got about an inch and a half until I need to start the heel flap. The only difference is I'm, I've moved where I did the garter band so that it's always on the outside edge of the foot. So the one I've knitted is the left sock and this will be the right sock. So I switched those around. So yes, I'm pleased to be getting on with those. Um, this jumper was such a lovely stocking stitch knit. I always like to have something super easy on the needles. So these socks will now become my brainless knitting. I'll knit on them while we play Dungeons and Dragons as a family. I take them to work just in case I get the odd minute for a cheeky row. And they're perfect for in the evening when you just can't make your brain do anything complicated. And hopefully I'll whip through those pretty quick because there is at least one sock pattern that I am aching to cast on. Um, I bought the pattern a while ago. It's been... Um, printed out and sat in my knitting box next to my armchair for weeks. I've got the yarn I want to use. I haven't caked it up yet. Itching to get started. My next work in progress, I haven't quite cast on. I've done a big old tension square. So for anyone who doesn't know, Jenny of Owl About Yarn and I have our own line of yarn called Carter of Yarn. And we both live in Wales and we were desperate for some proper Welsh wool and we thought, well, we better do it ourselves. <laughs> so we um, purchase fleece via the Brecon Wool Depot right in mid Wales, direct from the wool marketing board. And we take it down to Roger, who spins it up into yarn for us. And it's an exclusive blend of yarn. It's Welsh Mule and Welsh Blue Face Leicester. Because of the lead times involved in all of this processing, although we've been going for almost a year, well, we've been selling the yarn for almost a year, we've only just managed to get enough yarn in stock that Jenny and I can have a jumper's quantity to knit for ourselves. <laughs> um, we just didn't want to risk 
having a lot ourselves if we were still trying to sell it hand over fist. But we picked up our third batch not so long ago and we finally thought to ourselves, come on, we really ought to have, when we work shows, we really ought to have at least one of us in a car trev jumper and at least one of us in an owl about yarn jumper <laughs> or some for displays or something like that. Um, we both were dithering over patterns and colourways. Um, I've finally settled on my pattern and colourway. Jenny has settled on a pattern, but I'm not sure if she's decided on colours yet. Anyway, long story short, I have decided to knit... Ah, here we go. The Little Wave Cardigan, which is a pattern by um, Gudrun Johnston for Brooklyn Tweed. Now, I printed the picture off in colour at work, but I think my tone has gone a bit dodgy because it looks very yellow. But is it going to focus? Please focus. There we go. So there's the cardigan. And back to me. There we go. Um, and I'm really excited. It is, it's a saddle shoulder construction, which I've never tried before. So I was quite looking forward to that. And it has a garter shawl collar and I love a shawl collar. It also has pockets, which is fabulous. Um, the pattern calls for doubled over cuffs for the sleeves, which I'm not interested in because they bunch up under my coat sleeves. I don't know if you find that it's too much bulk, but that's easy enough to, um, easy enough to take out. I have to say, this is an incredibly well written pattern, but my goodness, Brooklyn Tweed patterns don't half go on. 16 sides of A4 this pattern was. So I printed it two pages to a side and double sided, which in retrospect perhaps wasn't a great idea because all the stitch counts are teeny tiny. <laughs> I'll need to go through and highlight them with a marker so I know which one I'm doing. What does it say? I'm sure someone has a bit of blurb I could read you. Oh yes, this cardigan has great classic elements, including saddle shoulder shaping, try saying that four times fast, shawl collar and clearly defined stitch pattern, faux elbow patches and pockets add a little extra something, but can just be as easily omitted. One of the reasons it's such a long pattern is because there's a ladies version which includes waist shaping and a gents pattern which does not. So here's the schematic so you can see the ladies and gents version there um, and if you look at the projects both on the pattern page um, and on the projects on Ravelry there's plenty of chaps modelling it and it looks really nice actually so I was pleased to have them um, pleased to finally have an excuse to cast this on basically it calls for worsted weight yarn um, but our our cartridge yarn is quite a substantial DK weight, so it's it's not a problem to um, to use it for this pattern. And yesterday, I actually cast on attention square. This is my yarn. This is cartridge yarn in Naturiol, which is its undyed colourway. As you can see, it's sort of um, it's looking a little grey on there. It's not grey. It's a it's an oatmeal very pale oatmeal colour, very slightly heathered, which means that when you dye colour onto it, it has a really nice depth. I've actually got, I've got some skeins hanging up to dry just out of shot, and I'm just wondering if I can grab one to show you. Yes, here we go. I haven't twisted them up yet. They've been drying on my era. Um, but there's the forest colourway, so you get a really nice depth of colour. Anyway, I've gone with natural, and it calls for five millimetre needles, and I, because I was just doing a tension square, I dug out my Knit Pro Zing double points, and it was like knitting with broomsticks. I can't remember the last time I knitted with a needle that large. Here it is. So I started at the bottom, with just some stocking stitch and then I did two repeats I'm all thumbs today two repeats of the little wave pattern which you can see there 
Um, it's not a cable, it's a twisted stitch. So there's no faffing about with cable needles, which is lovely. And it's very simple to do. Obviously, I can't go into details because it's a paid for pattern, but I think it stands out really well in the undyed yarn. I was dithering about which colourway to use. And I've got jumpers in most of the colours we do, although in different yarns. And Jenny said to me, you are allowed two cardigans in the same colour. But I think, actually, I'm thrilled with this one. It'll go with everything, especially jeans. And the um, twisted stitch pattern, I think, shows up really well in it. So it's a twisted stitch on a sort of garter border. So you've got these big bands of stocking stitch. And then where you've got the pattern bit, can you see there's pearl bumps in there as well? So it stands out really nicely. I haven't washed it yet. I only finished this late last night and I wanted to show it to you today. But just measuring as it is, um, it's pretty much spot on, I think. I was measuring it on my leg, so it's a bit curved rather than lying flat. But once I've finished, I will chuck it in the bathroom sink, pin it out flat. I don't, I won't stretch it, I'll just pin it flat and give it a proper measure, but I think I'm going to be spot on. I will have to be a bit careful with this pattern because I often have to go up a sleeve size um, because I've got weightlifters biceps. I'm, I'm not sure how that might work with a saddle shoulder, but I'll have a crack. So yes, I'm really pleased with that. This is what I would like to cast on when I finish talking to you. <laughs> which means with a bit of luck, I'll have something to show you the next time I record. There's quite a bit of, I think it starts with, you knit it bottom up and um, there's quite a bit of ribbing and then you go st straight into pockets, I think. But I'm looking forward to getting that sorted. And um, the other nice thing about garment knitting is it lasts you ages. And what I don't enjoy is the casting on and faffing about at the start. So I'm always pleased to have a nice jumper on the needles. Um, so basically those are my only two whips, Jocelyn socks, the cardigan I'm going to cast on. I do have two designs that I did tension squares for yesterday as well. I had a mass yarn winding session and then I knit three tension squares. But unfortunately I can't show you the other two. One is the October retreat pattern. Everyone that comes to the retreat gets a gift bag and a booklet with all the information in. And Jenny and I designed patterns to go in that booklet as well. So I can't show you that one. It's a secret. Um, but it will be available after the retreat. I always put them on Ravelry to buy, but I can't show you that yet. And the other one is a Cartrev design. The next time we're selling yarn is at Wonderwall Wales at the end of April. And Jenny and I wanted to try and get a couple of designs that were new. We've already got some. Well, I've got one. Jenny's been going great guns <laughs> and those are available via Ravelry and also through our Etsy shop, which is Cartrev Yarns on Etsy. Um, acquisitions. I mentioned last time that I had so many acquisitions having taken such a long break over the Christmas period that I was breaking it down into chunks to share with you. And that is what I'm doing again today. So I still won't manage to get through absolutely everything. But that's okay, spread spread the love. Um, first thing I wanted to show you was the um, February knit crate. Because this comes to me from the States, I always get them quite late. <laughs> so if anyone saw this yarn, I thought, oh, I'd love to get that. I don't know if it will still be available on their website. I wanted to mention again that they sent me this yarn for free. I'm part of their ambassador program, which is an affiliate scheme, and I've listed all of the information about it down below, including my affiliate link. But my opinions are my own, and my opinion on this month is rather fabulous, actually. Oh, the little extra that they sent, um, incomparable buttons, buttonmad.com. Giving employment to women in South Africa, handmade, fully washable buttons. Look at that beauty, absolutely stunning. Quite heavy you'd need a chunky a chunky knit for that but it's very nice okay this month's collaboration was with creative grandma and these are the skeins I've got sent it's a cream yarn 
with speckles of medium blue and a lavender. You can see a bit better on that one. So there's the lavender and the blue together. And it's a sport weight yarn. Now, sport weight isn't something we particularly have in the UK. I think it's a bit more popular in the States. And it's between a four ply, a fingering weight, and a DK. Um, so this is, let me read the labels. Ordine Wool's Shine Sport in the Colourway Sky. And it's 80% superwash merino, 20% tensile. Suggested needle size, 2.75 to 3.5 mil, which is US 2 to 4, and you get 320 metres to 100 grams. And I don't, again, the light isn't brilliant. It's inevitably raining. Um, it has a slight shine to it, which I think is the tent cell, and it feels really soft. And I'm thinking I might knit my brand new nephew a winter jumper. He is um, coming up to six months old and I thought maybe I could find a pattern and knit him a nice cardigan for next, for this coming autumn winter. I had a quick look online on Ravelry at patterns and nothing jumped out at me, but I have got Anne Bud's handy book of sweater patterns and her handy book of top down sweater patterns. So I thought I might just knit up another tension square. This week is all about tension squares. And just knit a top-down raglan cardigan and find some funky buttons. And because it's not a particularly gendered yarn, it's you know got purple and blue, but it's mostly cream, I thought that if they decide to have another child, a second child, then this would be perfect. You know, anyone can wear this. So yeah, I'm really pleased with that. As usual, it always comes in the box with the Inspirations pattern magazine, knitting and crochet. And again, you get the um, patterns for the sock weight crate and the, the knit crate crate, which is what I get. So yes, really pleased with that. And yeah, sorry, it's a bit later than lots of other ones. Next up is my Christmas present from Jenny and um, I'm absolutely thrilled with these. Jenny designed and knit me a pair of socks. Now Jenny is a very busy lady so it's just super touching that she found the time to knit me socks because I've got UK size 10 feet. There's a lot of knitting to cover my feet and not only did she knit me socks she designed them and not only did she design them they're cabled, so they really are the absolute final word in both knitting and best friend love. Um, so I still haven't found my larger sock blockers, I'm afraid, so they're a bit baggy on here. But you can see it's got a nice ribbed back and cables all down the front. Let me flatten it out so you can see the pattern. And hopefully you'll be able to see the cable pattern in there. There's a big cable and a little cable and they're supposed to be me and Jenny because <laughs> whilst I am six foot one Jenny is about five foot four are you Jen? There we go and this pattern is called thick and thin because we are best mates and we do all of the things together. She will be releasing this at some point in her Ravelry designer store but um, I'm not even sure if she sent it off to the tech editor yet. We've been really, really busy. But I'm absolutely thrilled with them. They're so beautiful. And they must have just taken absolutely ages. Look at that. Absolutely stunning. The yarn is her own hand dyed by Owl About Yarn. But I can't remember which yarn base it is. I suspect it's going to be BFL Nylon, but I could be wrong. Oh, and they match my jumper. And there are two of them. I've worn them once. Or twice and uh, then I kept them nice on the blockers to show you guys so thank you Jenny. Next up is my Christmas present. <laughs> um, I don't know if I mentioned but there's a, a group of us and we met mostly through the Knit to Retreat actually and we've become really good friends and at Christmas we did a secret swap and we all, well Jeanette's daughter 
put all our names in a hat and drew out who everyone got to do a parcel for. And Catherine was the lady that got my name. Hi, Catherine. Um, she lives up in North Wales. And in my little parcel, I got lots of Marmite flavoured goodies, which I absolutely love. I don't know if you love Marmite. It's a bit like Vegemite, but it's not veggie version. Um, and yeah, I'm a big fan. So I got a, a Marmite treats box with sort of Marmite rice cakes and crisps and things like that. And she also included this lovely sock set. So this is from Joy to the Wool. Look at that. And it's a 100 gram skein of yarn and a 20 gram mini. And it's Superwash Merino Nylon in the Christmas Everyday colorway. Look at that. Proper Christmas, that is. And it also comes with a little mitten stitch marker and she also included a lovely pin which says the joy of socks on it let me see the joy of socks so this has been sat in my podcasting box um since december because i haven't been able to put it away because i wanted to show it to you so thank you katrin i'm going to save this and i will cast it on in december it's definitely going to be for me I think I'll probably just find a nice texture pattern and just enjoy the lovely yarn because it looks like candy canes, doesn't it? Lovely. Right, so that was that one. Um, next up is Filu the Rat. <laughs> this was crocheted for me by my friend Ellie. Ellie also came to the retreat, but she's originally a member of my gym. That's how I met her. And she is a knitter and a crocheter as well, along with her mum. And um, when she watched my last podcast and realised that I haven't been terribly well, um, she wanted to make me something to cheer me up. And so she crocheted Filu the rat. Now, I don't know the pattern, I'm afraid, or the yarn, but isn't he absolutely beautiful? I love his little tiny pink nose and his enormous Dumbo ears. And uh, yeah, super soft and squishy. And I've had him in my work bag for a bit. And now I've shown you he can uh, take up his career as my stash guardian. So I'm absolutely thrilled with him. Thank you very much, Ellie. Last but by no means least is the contents of my gift bag. And I'm sure you all know there has been no Edinburgh Yarn Festival this year. And my particular group of knitty friends and I were all a bit sad that it wasn't going to happen. And for Jenny and I in particular, we were sad because the Edinburgh Yarn Festival is the only show we go to as visitors. Every other yarn show we go to, we go as vendors. And whilst we enjoy it very much, it's not the same experience. You don't get to have so much time hanging out and it's far more exhausting. Which meant that going to Edinburgh together was really special. We got to meet lots of people and just have time time to take in the nitty wonderfulness of it all. So we were sad that it didn't happen. And then one of our group of buddies, I can't remember who it was, said, balls to it, let's have our own. <laughs> um, excuse me. So Jeanette jumped online and found us a lovely old farmhouse in Lempster and booked it and we all threw money at her. And about six or seven of us went away for a long weekend just, just to make it our own retreat, basically. In a, in a, we called it the Edinburgh Alternative. That's our WhatsApp group name, um, which shortened is T, which we thought was quite good fun. <laughs> anyway, um, Jeanette was our spreadsheet master for that and got us all sorted and under control and in the right place at the right time. And to make the experience the full retreat experience, she very sweetly organised gift bags for us. It does include a long sleeve black t-shirt with the, a teapot logo she came up with, but mine's in the wash. Every one of us got one of these tote bags, Lempster County tote bags. It's got a cup of tea on it, which is rather fun. And it was absolutely packed with goodies. First of all, 
Jeanette is, um, as well as a knitter, she's a spinner and she also enjoys hand dyeing and everybody got a skein of hand dyed yarn. This is High Twist Superwash Merino Cashmere and Nylon. It doesn't have a colourway name, it's just the most beautiful dark raspberry. It's looking a bit more red on there but it is a raspberry pink colour. Absolutely gorgeous. I haven't decided what I'm going to make with it yet but it's really, it's really lovely. And she also went to the trouble to make us all a project bag. And like I said, there were six or seven of us, so it's not a small undertaking. This is mine, lovely tartan one. I think we all got tartan fabric as a nod to the not Edinburgh part of it. <laughs> That's mine in a lovely yellow color. And it's just got a nice gray sort of tweedy inside and tartan ribbons to close. And again, I've been keeping this nice in the bag ready to show you before I start using it but I think one of my new designs is going to go in there. I'm excited to be able to start using that. Um, next up is a lovely ceramic bell. Ooh, oh hang on no I've lost it never mind. Um, a lovely ceramic bell made by Jeanette's sister, who is January Norway Ceramics. You can find her on Facebook and Instagram. I don't think she has an Etsy shop. And here is mine. So it's on a great big long string so you can hang it up. And it has a key at the bottom for a weight. And then here is the ceramic bell. And it's this beautiful dribbly blue glaze with a bonger in the middle. It's probably an official name. It's probably not a bonger, is it? Absolutely lovely. Beautiful sound. So yes, January Norway ceramics. Absolutely lovely. That's going in my, uh, going in my back room, I think. What else is in my goodie bag? Oh, she also got us each a knitting notebook with our name on it. Look at that, Zoe's Knitting Notes. And this is by The Leaf Press. And it's um, just full of nice blank pages and a pencil to go with it that says, Knitting Feeds My Soul. I can never have too many notebooks. And Jeanette's mum is also very crafty. She came to visit us when we were there and she made each of us this beautiful braided keychain, which I absolutely love. And um, she also makes reindeer harnesses. Can you see? And it says on the back of the tag, Samai people wove braids like these using heddles made of reindeer horn and used them to decorate their clothes, domestic items and reindeer harnesses. Handwoven by Yvonne Baker. And I'm absolutely thrilled with it. Really pretty. So that's been adorning my keys ever since. And last but by no means least is this incredibly clever notions case. So it's um, like a, a double layer with compartments in. So you can open it up like that and then in the main compartment she included some stitch markers and some folding scissors and the stitch markers are on a kilt pin. They're lovely snag free ones. And then you've got four individual compartments that all open out separately that you can put anything you like in. So that will be perfect for just popping in your bag on the go. And it's got a clip on it so you can attach it to your project bag. Um, yeah, and it all came in that lovely tote bag. So that was really special. It's so generous of her. And I've just dropped the pencil. Oh, so much stuff. Oh my goodness. Um, and also as part of the get together, somebody, might have been Jeanette as well, um, had the bright idea of everybody knitting somebody else in the group a pair of socks. So again, it was 
names in a hat job. And I was feeling awful because, like I said, I've got enormous feet and it's just not fair to ask anyone to knit socks. But I think they um, finagled the name drawing somewhat so that Charlie, who is the yarn ambassador, um, got my name because Charlie has a circular sock machine. It's an old one. It's not the Earl Backer. She found it secondhand off eBay um, and I'll include a photo a bit later on. So she cranked sock tubes for me <laughs> and just added the heels and toes by hand afterwards. And because she felt like it was cheating using the machine, she made me two pairs, which is insane. And she made them long socks. Look at that. I'm afraid I don't know the yarn at all. Um, if Charlie, if you're watching and you can remember, so maybe stick it down below if anyone's interested. But the first one is a sort of peachy with slight grey speckles, which she's matched in the contrast cuffs, toes and heels. And she's made it a rib. Can you just see? It's like a three by one rib. Um, and the way she did that on the sock machine was you take a needle out. So it isn't actually a purl stitch. It's a slightly longer bar between the stitches. So she made me these beautiful pinky peachy raspberry ones and she made me green and grey stripy ones. Now I have to apologise for the state of these. I've been wearing these in bed for over a week. So they're not looking at their finest. But again, same, same thing, ribbed, um, not quite as long as the other ones and contrast cuffs, heels and toes. And what I dropped just earlier was the, um, the leftover scraps. <laughs> Every, we all knitted these socks for everyone else and we're completely paranoid about them not fitting. So we all included extra bits of the yarn, either for dyeing, um, not for dyeing, for darning if they got holes in, or if you wanted to rip the toe out and knit the foot a bit longer. So I've got some scraps, which will be perfect. And that is the end of my acquisitions. <laughs> I was thinking I didn't have much to talk about today, but I've got to 37 minutes and still haven't finished. So obviously I was doing all right. Um, yes, I think that was everything for the acquisitions. Like I said, I do have a few more bits that I still, still haven't shown. Um, and I'll fit those in next time. That's it for the nitty content. So if you wanted to give it a break there and wander off, by all means do so. There's just a little bit more chat at the end. I wanted to say just an enormous thank you to absolutely everybody that got in touch with me after my last podcast episode about my rheumatoid arthritis. Um, I was a bit nervous about sharing it, but you've all just been so kind and I've been inundated with messages and emails just either offering love and hugs or some lovely suggestions of what to do to try and help things along and lots of you shared your own stories with me as well either about yourselves or loved ones um, and everyone was overwhelmingly positive while still being sympathetic so thank you very much it meant a lot to me that you took the time to do that um, I have actually been to see the NHS consultant the appointment came through a lot faster than I thought and the doctor was absolutely lovely and I am now on a literal carrier bag full of drugs. <laughs> I went in for the appointment on Thursday thinking perhaps not very much would happen as I was already on some tablets. Um, but yeah, I came away with even more tablets and I'm fully under the NHS now. Medications coming out of my ears and being very well looked after. The main thing that he did was up my dose of steroids again, which is fabulous. So I'm feeling um, a lot better, a lot less pain, a lot less stiffness. So that's why I was able to knit like the wind and finish my boxy to show you. But yeah, I won't, I, there's no need for me to go on about it every time I record, but I did want to say an enormous thank you to everyone. Um, it meant a lot to me that you all were interested. So thank you very much. What else do I have to talk to you about? Oh, yeah, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about when we went to Lempster on this girls knitting retreat. Um, it was an absolute hoot. It was so what I needed. <laughs> and I got to share the drive up with Ange of Yarn and Yarns. Um, if you watch the Yarn and Yarns podcast, you'll know Ange. And she lives just the next town over for me. So I scooped her up on the way and we 
yacked for two hours solidly, <laughs> which was lovely. And as well as lots of eating, you should have seen the snack table. It was absolutely heaving. We all brought lots of knitting. A couple of us wanted to learn how to spin. So Angela bought some fluff and some drop spindles and got two of us going on that. Charlie bought her circular sock machine and I'll try and put a picture of it up here. Like I said, I don't know any information about it and Charlie doesn't really know either. Um, but quite a few of us bought some yarn and had a crank on the sock machine, which was quite good fun. Jenny bought her dyeing equipment and some undyed um, skeins of yarn. So people dyed up jumper quantities and minis and did swaps and that was really good fun. And then on the... Uh, the Saturday night, Jeanette had booked us a table at the local pub for dinner, so we all put on our matching t-shirts <laughs> and took our knitting and went to terrorise the locals. Um, and it was a crazy busy pub. Lempster is quite rural. It's right on the Welsh-English border in the marches, quite agricultural. But the pub was absolutely heaving. And I think people thought we were a bit odd because there was a table full of women in matching t-shirts knitting furiously. And then one chap turned up with his mates, obviously out on the tiles on a Saturday night. And he was wearing spray-on plaid trousers and a neon green string vest. Oh, and the weather was Baltic. And there was this chap in a string vest. And I thought, well, good on you. <laughs> so that was good fun. And otherwise we cooked at home all our breakfasts and lunches and things and had a really nice time. What else have I been up to? Um, I'm getting back into the swing of woolly Wednesdays. I don't usually work a shift at the gym on Wednesdays and Jenny and I have earmarked that as every week we will get together on a Wednesday and do whatever we have to do. At the moment we are dying like Billy over car trev because we need to build up the stock for Wonderwall. And we've got four um, it's like plug-in induction hobs now. So we plug all of those in in my kitchen and we die like mad. And while the yarn is hubbling away, we fire up our laptops and do retreat things. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's really nice. It, both of us benefit from the structure of being together and having a diary date and to-do lists. Um, so they can be very full-on days, but they're always good fun. And yeah, it's my birthday today. We, like I said, we celebrated yesterday when everyone was home, um, but I had a really nice time. Um, I've got two bunches of flowers. There's one here and there's one in the front room. And Dave cooked me a really nice birthday tea. I had salmon and sweet potato chips. And then <laughs> Dave and Jocelyn, my daughter, tried to make scones, which isn't terribly difficult. But I think the first time they made the recipe up, they used plain flour. So they have to throw that out and start again. Um, and although the scones tasted lovely, they didn't rise at all. I think my oven is on the blink, so the scones came out literally a centimetre thick. <laughs> but the thought was there, and they stuck a candle in the top, and everyone sung to me. So it was a really nice day. And today is my actual birthday, and I've got a day to myself in the house, which is so rare. It's absolutely fabulous. I went for a lovely walk this morning with my friends Sarah and Carmen. The weather was nicer this morning. It was sunshine. So we went down to the beach and had a nice catch up. And then I did all my jobs. I hoovered and mopped the floors. That was exciting. Cleared down the kitchen and bleached the shower. So that was pretty gripping stuff. And yeah, I thought I'd talk to you and then go and have some knitting time. So I'm going to leave it there because it's two o'clock, which means I've got an hour and a half till the kids get home. So I need to go and hit the sofa. But thank you very much for watching. Um, please check down below for all of the details and the timestamps and I will see you again in a couple of weeks. Bye!